Hello everyone, it's Jojo here, heading to my studio right now. Last Friday, I uploaded my first video on my new channel and the result was insane. Not only did the number of my subs go over 17k, holy shit, that was so crazy, really. Totally beyond my imagination. And also, I got lots of messages of love and support from all over the world. I just want to say thank you, thank you so much. They put a lot of pressure on me, but I guess that's a good kind of pressure. Okay, let me get my Bobati first. Yeah. You know, I, I read every single comment and uh, I really wanted to reply them all, but there were just too many. Boba milk tea. That was the weekend I went to Kandin with a bunch of my good friends. Kandin is the southernmost part of Taiwan. And uh, since I was scrolling my phone all the time to check the message, they were just like, Well, 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 internet celebrities, do you remember who I am? Oh, here comes the web star of the year, wow! Shut the f up. Some of my friends asked me, What exactly did I do to convince Stan Mage to come to Taiwan? I figure it's a good opportunity today to share the story with you. On June 7th, Sam Mace released a video called Deported from America, in which he announced his not normal show. It took me 3 seconds to take action and print my seat on his website. But then I thought, there must be tens of thousands of people who did just the same thing. Maybe a thousand of them would be approved, and then maybe a hundred of whom would take further action to send emails or DMs to him. But maybe out of these 100 people, only 10 would think of making a video to him. So my goal was pure and simple. I just needed to tell the most compelling story out of those 10. But what kind of story should I tell? Of course my story, but I need to tell it fast. So I started filming and editing until the end of June. At last, I finished my video in the bathroom in Penghu Discovery Hotel. Then, on the way to watch the last show of Penghu Fireworks Festival, I used my mobile phone to upload a video while holding my wife's hand. So this is the video I made. Hello Dan, this is Xiaoxiao from Taiwan. My homeland Taiwan is a small country located next to China. But a lot of people confuse Taiwan with Thailand. What the f But first, let me tell you a bit my story. In 2013, I quit my job and went cycling the world with a guitar on my back, which was not normal at all. I set off from Taipei, and the final destination was your hometown, Cape Town. I cycled across China via the ancient Silk Road, then into the European continent from Moscow, circling by reaching Edinburgh from the Northern Pass, and then back to Istanbul by the Southern Land. Following, I flew to Cairo, cycling through some dangerous war zone and deadly desert, all the way to Cape Town. It took me two years to cycle 25,000 kilometers in total. Based on my calculation, the bicycle wheels spun 10,820,000 rounds. Hence, my book on this trip was titled This. You might ask, why did you do that? Well, I've always wanted to do something for this beautiful island. For decades, China has been exhausting all its means to obstruct Taiwan's participation in all international communities. Furthermore, they even claim Taiwan is part of China's territory. Some examples. They keep blocking Taiwan from attending WHA. Even the fact is that Taiwan's medical system is one of the best in the world. They forced some major airlines to change the option of Taiwan to Taiwan, China as a province of China in the selection menu. They continuously use economic power to buy out Taiwan's allies, force them to cut the tie with Taiwan. As of now, Taiwan only has 17 allies left. We were and still are isolated and ignored by international communities. We need friends, desperately. I didn't know what to do, so I chose to step out. 
to search the answer in a big, big world. In every place I traveled to and with any person I met, I told the story of Taiwan. One day, I visited the occupation museum in Riga, the capital of Latvia. Before wrapping up the visit, I had a little chat with the museum staff. I said I was really inspired by you Baltic people, how you stood up against the Soviet Union peacefully. And I said, we Taiwanese are facing a similar situation as you were. The staff was surprised and baffled. He said, I saw Taiwan was part of China, but only richer, and the people in Taiwan were happy about it. I immediately replied, no, no, no. Taiwan is like what Tibet was and what Hong Kong is. The only difference is that we don't have a Dalai Lama to tell our story. And he said, oh, sorry, I didn't know that. But thank you for telling me. Besides, you are telling the story of Taiwan. Why don't you be the Dalai Lama of Taiwan? His words hit me so hard. But sooner after, I was overwhelmed with self-doubt. Can I? Who am I? What story can I tell? Carry all the self-asked questions. I continue my journey. One year later, I reached the final destination. I lift my bicycle over my head at the Cape of Good Hope. Well, the answers were yet to come in light. Then I flew back to Taiwan. It was June of 2015. After settling back home, I tried many things to pursue my dream. I built an app for cyclists to record their paths with photos. I built a travel blog to share my cycling tips and stories. But these initiatives got me nowhere. I plunged into depression and anxiety. I would have lied in bed for 20 hours and couldn't move myself a bit. Till the day, I got a call from the owner of a Taiwanese bicycle brand who sponsored my journey. He said to me, I've got hundreds of bicycles sitting there waiting for someone to hire. Why don't we take the initiative to find ways to attract foreigners to come cycle in Taiwan? It was like an epiphany. How could I not think of it? I have cycled half the world, and I truly believe Taiwan is one of the best places to cycle. I did cycle through some countries with great infrastructures for bicycles, such as Germany and the Netherlands. While enjoying the smoothness, sometimes it could be boring with the same landscape over hours and hours. In Germany, I could go for three days with only trees in sight. In the Netherlands, only trains stretched for as far as I could see. I once fell asleep on my bike. Imagine! There's no place like Taiwan, as you could have it all in one day. Picture yourself hiking in some mountains over 3,000 meters high, and then in the afternoon, you just hop on a bike, cycling all the way down to a beach to surf in the Pacific Ocean. What's more, along the way, you could see mountains and gorge, tea plantations and paddy fields. It's gonna be a feast to your eyes. Various cultural forms and lifestyles of Aboriginal, Han, new immigrants weaving together. While admiring the diversity, you could refill yourself with local cuisines, interact with friendly locals and hospitable police officers. Not to mention that Taiwan is also the heart of bicycle industry. We have neither monuments of thousands of years nor grand mountains covered with snows, yet we do pride ourselves with these dedicated sceneries, delicious cuisines, and wonderful, kind people. They are like pearls from the oceans. Each is unique, and it only takes a bicycle to thread the pearls to be one of a kind piece of jewelry. This is the story I want to tell. I started out exploring Taiwan with my bicycle in a thorough way I have never done before, with camera and a drone. I took a lot of photos and footage from land and air. Meanwhile, I tried to draw out suitable itineraries. I had the pleasure to guide a group of French visitors circling Taiwan on a bike that year. I also took a Swiss family who has been living a nomadic cycling life for eight years to cycle the east coast of Taiwan, and they just loved it. When I was about to start my YouTube channel, 
to show the world how fantastic it is to cycle in Taiwan. You launch your not normal show, so I have to do this. I would like to challenge you to cycle one of the most difficult cycling paths in the world, the King of the Mountain. This path starts from the beautiful coast of the Pacific Ocean and ascends to height 3,275 meters at Wulin. Lens to those 100 kilometers with 3,500 meters ascent. It's not gonna be easy, yet I could guarantee you, it will be once a lifetime experience. Of course, you can always hop on an e-bike or a support vehicle if you want. So please, please come to Taiwan to cycle with me and help me to tell the story of Formosa, the beautiful island of Taiwan. Oh, and other than that, I just want to say, you're awesome, bro. And thank you so much for telling us that we are awesome too. I'll see you in Taiwan. I immediately sent a message to Dan on his website. And a weekend later, I got an email from his production manager. Here's what he said. I got this email at 6 in the morning. I had to try my best not to scream out loud and wake up my wife. So what happened next? You already know that. Some people say that I was lucky. Yes, indeed, I consider myself the luckiest guy in the world. But I think luck isn't the only reason why this story came true. If I picked a safer road six years ago, if I didn't quit my job to travel the world, Right now, I think I probably would be a manager in media tech with a fancy car, a big house, a 5 million Taiwanese dollar annual salary, maybe some kids. And now I'm 41 years old with only motorcycle and my bike, a rented house, and a saving that's about to run out. You might ask me, is all of this worth it? The answer is a resounding yes. Because I got so many things that money can't buy. I saw the world, I found the purpose of my life, and also the story you are witnessing right now. Hello. You may say I'm a dreamer. So, this is pretty much for today. I hope you like this story. If you do, please hit the like button. And also, if you're interested in the stories I'm about to create, please consider to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next video. Peace!